I don't know how, but apparently a uh, flu came by me just as I was about to start recording. So I apologize if I sound a little sickly in this one. Well, so now, right, we standing skill makes more sense in overdress. Mm. That means you're not just restanding because your mom says you can. <laughs> because your mom says you can. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Oh, no, That's what happened to the cross. <laughs> we stand because. <laughs> <And> mama st <laughs> mama <we stand. laughs> Hi, everybody, this is CVGS. I'm the captain here. And on this recap for the Vanguard live stream for Overdress for 18 May 2021, we'll be looking at the reveals and sharing our collective thoughts on them. This week's livestream was low on the new side as we only gotten information on some promo cards in June, two new cards for Zorga in DBT-02, as well as a confirmation of something we already know about to a certain extent. Most of Tuesday's livestream was follow-up and repeated information from the previous week's TCG strategy presentation, but we did gleam some things from producer Mori's Q&A that was held that same stream. We'll start with the reveals first as the Q&A follows up from them. As mentioned, there are two new cards revealed for Zorga that are Double R and Triple R respectively, but there are also some new promo cards for the month of June. In V Premium and Premium, we are getting Go Paladin and Great Nature promos, while Standard will have a new Brand Gate card. Knight of Treasure Bow Vitrinus continues on back row Rearguard Circle. If you have caught two or more Rearguards via card abilities this turn, this unit gets boost and plus 5k power. And when placed on the Guardian Circle, except when it's from the Rear Guard Circle, meaning you can't intercept, by playing Counter Blast 1 during that battle, when this unit will be retired, you may move it to an open back row Rear Guard Circle instead. This is actually a nice card to play with many Go Pardon Aces, Gurgrit comes to mind. It has solid abilities that can keep reinforcements on the field for you for your coming turns. Veteran Janitor Sigur, at the end of the turn you may Soul Blast 1 and retire all of your Rear Guards in the same column as this unit. If you retire 2 units, choose one of your Vanguard and search your deck for up to 1 card with the same card name as that unit, reveal it, add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. It combos well with a lot of units that have skills that activate on retire at the end of the turn. I could see this used well in my old Big Belly Strike deck. Flash Scissors Monster Scissors Bar Please don't run with this card in your hand, okay? Auto on the Rigard Circle, when this unit attacks, if you have a set order in your order zone, by paying Soul Blast 1, this unit gets plus 5k until the end of that battle. If you need a strong attacker and you have plenty of soul from your prison card placement, whether you are playing Sarah Snow or Office, this card will find some good use in your Brand Gate deck. Now we move on to the BTO2 stuff. Regurgitation from the Underworld is a new Grade 3 Order card that can be played by paying Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1. Choose any player's rear guards and retire it. Then choose one card for your drop zone with the same grade as the unit retired and call it to Regard Circle. If used in Alka Magic, call two units instead of one. This is a very good card because it addresses one issue I brought up with Zorga in our top 10 right lines. Most of the current order cards have that vibe of working better at the front or tail end of Alka Magic. This card is the first one that I can comfortably say I have no qualms about where it goes because of that retire any rear guard capability. Field Reinforcement is the bigger deal here than the removal, but all in all, this is actually an important card you will see soon in Zorga decks. Another important card you'll see with Zorga is the Triple R Grade 1, Rogue Headhunter. Its continuous skill on the Regard Circle is if you play an order this turn, this unit gets plus 5k power. And when placed on Regard Circle for that turn, if you would play your next Alka Magic to play an order, reduce the total cost by Counter Blast 1. It also says that if the cost goes into negative cost, you do not counter charge. Oh, oh wow, they actually did stop the cheating skills. I made jokes but this clarification is important to note on the card to stave off confusion about what happens with a negative counter blast cost. Once again, I refer to the issues of Zorga from our top 10 right lines. This is another unit that reduces more cost for Zorga's Alchemagic usage. The 30k power is nothing to sneeze at of course, but ultimately you want to make sure that he's down on your Zorga right up turn to take full advantage of his ability to reduce counter blast costs that can be dedicated to other skills. These two cards are great additions for Zorga, and with what we see here from the 4 supports for the right line, who knows what we may see for the others. Speaking of right lines, they talked more about encounter cards that were shown last week with Dracoric Overlord and Phantom Blaster Dragon. And we got a little bit more information out of them. 
We pretty much have the confirmation that these two legendary units will have their own right line with Dragonite Overlord having Lizard Soldier Conro, Dragon Monk Gojo and Dragon Knight Nehalim. While Fighter Blaster Dragon comes full circle from its OG Vanguard days with Full Bow, Blaster Javelin and Blaster Duck. The community is really divided up about the inclusion of these cards this early in Overdress, with some calling it a pandering to nostalgia where the format needs to be able to stand on its own feet, just like how G-Series was back in the day. But honestly speaking, we are more frustrated with how much info or lack thereof is that released for them. Their concerns about how they will affect the ratios in the carton, what they will do, how they will impact the premium, especially how they will impact the premium, oh my word! The fact that we know little about them makes it hard to predict if these encounter cards will be good inclusions. So far, they have done a great job with the release of the start decks and DBT-01, but I still cannot help but fret a little about DBT-02 and beyond. In the producer's Q&A, which I want to give a huge thanks to the community for helping me find this information, producer Keita Mori has talked openly about how they want to have strong communication between the developers and the players, much like how companies running mobile games or MMORPGs has been doing recently. They're looking at every comment, every criticism, every voice, not just from the Vanguard player base but also the global player base to gather feedback in order to make Vanguard as great a card game as it can be. No opinion is brushed aside if you're not pleased with what is happening with Vanguard at that state. Your opinion matters to producer Mori and his team so they can make Vanguard better as it moves forward. So as frustrated as I am about encounter cards, I am able to put my faith in Mori-san to handle these encounter cards well and make them fair and balanced for Vanguard in all formats. He has mentioned that there's a lot of information about the encounter cards that are deemed as spoilers, so it's only a matter of time for me. I just need to be patient. This endeavour that Morrison has to have this open channel between us and him is unprecedented in Vanguard and it's an opportunity we cannot squander away. Because he's talked about how there have been some very rude comments he's gotten from the English side. As a Vanguard content creator, it's my responsibility as one to tell you guys, the Vanguard community as a whole, that such behaviour is putting this open channel at risk. Being nice doesn't cost you anything. Being mean will always cost you more than you know. Your opinion matters, but when you bring them to Morisan, please for the love of Messiah, be respectful and constructive. Don't bite the hand that feeds you and everyone around you, or we will all starve. More from the Q&A, these encounter cards are a part of the lore from Planet Cray and were introduced into the boosters as such this early for this reason. And as the story expands, other nations will have their own encounter cards. The law website, which has an English version coming out very soon, is establishing units that still exist in this deityless era on Planet Cray. Draconic Overlord is one such unit in the elderly story being told right now. Morisa mentions that they don't want to ignore Vanguard's past, and one idea that he's brought up is the Stripe units from G Era, which are units that come from the future. But when is that future is the question he proposed. We may likely see some units that were strides in the G era actually be normal units in Overdress, and that's something that's very intriguing for older players like myself. Other questions answered are that Lyrical Monastery will have 6 right lines, meaning that there's one here that isn't featured in the promotional materials. The ever popular, highly sought after, frequently asked, we sympathize with you Mori-san, Power Counters have no current plans to be sold separately at this time outside of random prizes at shop tournaments and the two collab trial decks for Token Rambu and Monster Strike in Japanese. But they said that they're going to look into it given how many people has asked them about it. V-Clan Collections Volumes 1 and 2 being released at the same time is a test to see if this is good for the community to go with a one day boost everything method for the V Premium and Premium format. This is something that Morisan and his team will take note of as it releases on how it will impact these formats. English players, the team is well aware of the problem that there are essential and powerful promo cards released in Japanese that hasn't been released in English. They are looking into how they will be rectifying that problem. And lastly, the question of why the mainline sets are being released every 3 months is answered. Since they are nation based, having them be a monthly release will cause an oversaturation of cards released for the format. Unlike previously, when they had 24 clans to boost, it always puts a rush on the development process because they don't want to leave any clan behind on their boosts. I am paraphrasing here, but it was said out loud on stream. Having overdressed boosts take as long as it does to be released, enables them to test the new cards and make sure that the power creep is in check and all cards are well balanced. 
I apologize if this recap is low on the jokes, but it really does break my heart to see a man like producer Keita Mori work so hard for us and for Vanguard, only to not get the recognition he deserves from us. It also doesn't help that I'm feeling sick right now, and that's because I wrote this script at 4am in the morning, but I did it for mori -san. So no questions, I'm actually going to be posting to you guys. Please show some love to producer Keita Mori in the comments below, and I'll send them to him via Twitter. And if you want to be part of a live conversation with us on Overdress, we're on Twitch for our Tuesdays live streams and Wednesdays for our discussion streams on YouTube. So be sure to follow us on Twitch for our gaming live streams, slam that like and subscribe button and ring the ding the bell so you get notified of all of our videos whenever they get released, be it for Vanguard or Battle Spirits. Be sure to follow us on all of our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We also have a Discord as well where you can find myself, Dempster and Leon on most nights. If you like what we do here and want to support us directly, you can join our membership where it can be like Wen Hao Law, Daddy Agrieto, and Samuel McKay, and have access to our meme emotes and badges during our premieres and live streams. So with that said, thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!